Have you ever wondered how you can create a garden that works with nature rather than against it? Permaculture is a holistic approach to designing gardens that mimics the balance and harmony of natural ecosystems. We have been talking about different types of gardening methods, including Hugo culture and square foot gardening, and today we will be looking at permaculture. Permaculture is another gardening practice with a rich history. Originally starting in Japan, it gained prominence during the hippie movement of the 1960s and back to the land movement of the 1970s when founders Bill Mollison and David Holmgren referred to it as whole gardening. It's about sustainable living and creating abundance, whether that's food, water, or wildlife habitat. This integrated approach considers the natural ecosystem and the overall environment. Permaculture is based on 12 principles that basically work to reduce waste, work with the landscape, and achieve synergy in our gardens. There are three core tenets, which are caring for the earth, caring for people, and fair share. Earth care seeks to protect and enhance the natural environment. This means enriching the soil, conserving water, and encouraging biodiversity. People care ensures that we as humans have our needs met in a way that is sustainable. It involves building community and systems that support one another. Sharing resources and limiting consumption prevents waste and ensures that all life can thrive. Fair share also implies returning surplus back into the system, be it compost, seeds, or knowledge. Hi, I'm Amy. Fox Run Environmental Education is a small 501c3 nonprofit that focuses on organic gardening, wildlife conservation, and environmental education. We donate profits each month from YouTube and book sales to wildlife rehabilitators and school gardens. As always, I appreciate your support. Permaculture has many advantages and appeals to people who are interested in self-sufficiency. It is all about creating that self-sustaining system by using natural resources efficiently, such as capturing rainwater, composting, and encourage, encouraging biodiversity. Your garden becomes less reliant on external inputs, such as store-bought fertilizer and creates a closed loop system that regenerates itself over time. Permaculture encourages diversity in plants, animals, insects, and microorganisms to create a balanced ecosystem. Biodiversity enhances resilience against pests and diseases as a variety of species support natural balances and checks. Plus, Encouraging pollinators and beneficial insects helps with crop production. In biodiversity, managing livestock benefits the pastures by allowing for rotation. Sheep may be placed in the pasture to eat the taller grass and weeds, and then chickens run through to scratch for seeds and small plants, both being moved through fairly quickly so not to stress native plants and support the nutrition levels of the livestock. This is what I do for chicken rotation. Chicken tractors, great to have them go around the orchard and debug. This was one of my early tractors, and I want to say that you should never use chicken wire. Now I use hardware cloth to protect from predators. Biodiversity means attracting beneficial insects like butterflies. You can check out my video on growing a garden to attract them. I also have a free PDF on this design on the website. Once established, permaculture systems require less maintenance compared to conventional gardening. Perennials, mulch, and natural pest control methods help reduce the need for constant care, allowing you to enjoy more time harvesting and less time managing your garden. Water conservation has many advantages. Techniques like rainwater harvesting, swales, and mulching reduce how much water you need to use. These methods help capture and store water so plants can use it, or you can use it, on your plants during dry periods. 
So there are many advantages to permaculture, but one of the disadvantages is that it is very labor intensive, especially in the beginning during the setup process. Creating swales, building raised beds, setting up water catchment systems, planting perennials, all of that takes time, effort, and money, and money up front. This can be a barrier for beginners or if you have limited resources. We talked about building Hugo culture beds in a previous video. These are also popular and part of permaculture. Well, these are great for long-term fertility, it can be argued that they do need time to get established and compost needs to be added to maintain fertility, especially if you want to plant on top of them. In some permaculture examples, there is also more emphasis placed on growing perennials, such as fruits, especially if you are in a warmer climate. This is great if you are a market farmer, but if you are just looking to provide food for your family in a smaller space, you will want more variety. However, don't let space inhibit you. There are a lot of permaculture techniques you can use in a small space, and many people grow much of their vegetables on a city plot. Even if you have a small plot, the most important thing to do is start composting. Healthy soil is the foundation of a successful permaculture garden. Instead of sending kitchen scraps to the landfill, turn them into nutrient-rich compost to feed your soil. A fun project to start with is an herb spiral. These are round layers that use a small amount of space to grow a variety of herbs or whatever else you want to grow in them. You can build the spiral with bricks or stones. Add a layer of gray gravel to the bottom layer and then compost. The spiral design allows for microclimates. So put drier herbs like rosemary at the top and moisture loving herbs like mint near the bottom. A rain garden is a shallow planted depression that captures the stormwater runoff from your house and allows it to slowly filter into the ground. It's a great way to manage water while creating a beautiful landscape. A swale is a gently sloped trench or ditch that follows the natural contours of the land. Its purpose is not to move water from one place to another, but rather to slow down water flow, allowing it to soak into the ground. Swales are typically accompanied by a raised berm of soil on the downhill side. This berm is often planted with trees, shrubs, or other vegetation, which benefits from the extra water collected in the swale. Swales and berms are also easy to incorporate into a vegetable garden. Permaculture gardening offers numerous benefits, particularly for those seeking a sustainable and eco-friendly way to garden. However, it does require careful planning and maintenance and hard work. If you're someone who enjoys learning, experimenting, and thinking holistically about your environment, permaculture might be a good fit for you. Thanks for watching, and I hope you have a fabulous day.